Your life according to the government. You're born. Your parents now have $200,000 they need to invest into the economy over the next 18 years in order to raise you. You go to school where you learn the basics of life, math, reading, science, and history through the eyes of progressive propaganda. You will learn things like Woodrow Wilson was one of the greatest presidents, presiding over the creation of the Federal Reserve, IRS, and America's involvement in World War I in order to make the world safe for democracy. Warren Harding and Calvin Coolidge, who avoided the Great Depression of the 1920s, will be completely ignored. Why? Because when economic imbalances struck the nation, they did nothing, and the free market corrected the imbalances despite having a central bank. However, Hoover, who raised taxes and expanded government will go down as the free market president who caused the Great Depression. Please ignore the fact that after the New Deal program went into effect, the nation still had an average unemployment rate of 18% even in 1939. Next, you will learn that the Democratic Party is the party of peace, despite being led to war by Wilson, Roosevelt, Truman, Kennedy, Johnson, and Clinton with no UN approval. By the way, where did this idea come from that the president could declare war without any approval from Congress? Oh yes, President Truman, another peaceful progressive. Oh, and don't forget Ronald Reagan and George W. Bush were model fiscal conservatives. After grade school, you will go into college to learn Keynesian economics and scientific theories. Theories that should be treated as absolutes, just like global cooling was in the 1970s or the earth being flat in the 1400s. You will also learn that there are no unintended consequences of government action, and the government's role is to not only protect your inalienable rights, but to protect you from everything, including yourself. After you graduate with $21,000 of college student loans, you will learn that according to the BLS, you have a 39% chance of actually making more money than a high school graduate who didn't spend four years racking up student loans. That's right, you may fall into the 61% category, where you end up making the same as your friends who skipped college. But remember, the important thing to do is stick to the plan. Go to school, get good grades, and if you're lucky, you can find a company to work for that will take care of you. You know, health benefits and stock options. Now around the age 25, you will get married. Between 26 and 28, you will have a child and your own $200,000 commitment for the next 18 years. At age 32, it's time to buy a house, or realistically rent a house from the bank. Because remember, it's good to borrow money. This way, you get a tax deduction from the government. In fact, if you find yourself in a position where you can't afford to rent a house from the bank, the government will assist you, just as they did in college. This way, the person or the bank selling the house to you doesn't have to lower their price. The government will be happy to guarantee your loan or even completely fund it if necessary. By your mid-40s, your children are now entering their teenage years. The government likes this because you are now reaching your peak spending habits. Your teenagers are eating more than they ever have. They need a car, auto insurance, college money, and date money. Money that you already pay taxes on is finally entering the economy at a much more rapid rate in order to get taxed again. That's right, first the government taxes your paycheck, then they tax it every time you spend what's left. Oh, but don't forget to max out your IRA. This way Wall Street has plenty of buyers for everything they want to sell. Now that your kids are leaving, it's time to think about retirement, and if you're the the average American, then that will probably be the extent of your retirement. Thinking. A lot of thinking. If you're average, then you probably have roughly $2,000 saved or less in retirement savings. But that's okay because you have Social Security. Ah, the retirement program that never was. Originally meant to keep people from falling through the cracks and into poverty is now our golden retirement plan of choice. No need to save during your lifetime because in the back of your mind you're thinking, what's the worst that can happen when I have a fat Social Security account just collecting interest in its Social Security lockbox? Well, now you're entering your 60s and your spending habits are collapsing. The kids are out of the house. You just quit your job. Why? Because some arbitrary number set by some guy in the 30s said 65 was a good age. So now your entitlement spending is in full swing while at the same time your income taxes are down along with your spending. Oh, and by the way, if you did have a 401k that was correctly diversified, you can now fulfill the goal of taking money out of the poorest tax bracket. We mean the lowest tax bracket. Remember, that was the plan.